welcome to our next podcast video. We are excited to get to invest in every one of you who are taking the time to watch or listen. We don't take it lightly. Yes. And recently we, um, we asked what are some suggestions, things that you would like for us to address or talk about. And one of the things, one of the themes that came up was yeah. this issue in people's lives of delayed promises or delayed prophetic words that they've received through the years that have never come to pass. Um, and, and just delayed healings. delayed healings when they're contending for, you know, chronic illness. And I think we can relate to all of the above. And yes. so we just wanted to take a little bit of time and, you know, more than anything else, try to encourage you and, and also pray over you um, when we're done kind of conversing about this. So any uh, thoughts that you would like to lead out on with that? Well, you know, first of all, we, we don't want to just come up with trite, easy answers. And we want to recognize that there is, uh, there is mystery involved in all these things that we're talking about. There's the reality that, you know, we're supposed to learn how to persevere, be people of resolve. Uh, even a personal prophetic word we got, you will reap in due season if you faint not. And so the if you faint not... Um, you realize the reason that's in there is because there's a, a, a wanting to faint at yeah. some time, at some point, because the delays can be uh, so long, you know, whether it's for the proverbial breakthrough, whether it's in ministry, finances, healing, and particularly something that has a strong prophetic trail attached to it. By a strong prophetic trail, I mean that you received multiple Incredible prophetic words for it. You had some unique ways the Lord confirmed it to you, and yet it doesn't seem to be uh, advancing into fulfillment. Yeah. And we know just one of the ways that we ourselves have have uh, you know put our heart out there to do is is to just continue believing in a good God, and and really all things work together for good. They work together for good, for those called according to his purposes and keep looking at him, is that feign not aspect. And so, you know, the temptation comes to just throw out the hope at some point, throw out the promise. And I suppose there is nothing wrong with vetting a prophetic word, vetting a promise. I think that's something we've looked into is, did we really, did we really get, what did we really get promised? there what, mm -hmm. what was it and and there's no backing off anything that has you know the scripture says it, let something be confirmed in the voice of two or three witnesses and if there are multiple confirmations that are clear in that kind of way then we want to maintain maintain our hope and our trust and I think one of the things we find and what people are asking as well I think you mentioned Elizabeth is uh, or implied is you know there are some some matters that it, it like time has expired seemingly mm -hmm. like maybe you prophesied or you felt like God promised that you were gonna have a child and you're already in menopause like it's not even an option anymore right and you may be and you were going to get married by a certain you're gonna be married by 30 or by 40 or whatever it is and those dates have come and gone, so there's no way to recoup them. Mm -hmm. And and in those, in, in you know, it's a different approach in matters that there there is no way that it can be fulfilled, at least in the way that you perceive that you you receive the promise. Um, true promises of God, true prophetic uh, promises of God, they never die. They they're there. They pass on. They get upgraded. Yeah, we realize there's things. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And what that means is he's a God that thinks multi-generationally. And we're aware, you know, that there are things that our parents desire to do that they weren't able to step into for whatever reason. Um, the enemy somehow was able to uh, either take somebody out seemingly early or whatever. And so there's a contending for past mantles and past promises that we can uh, take as on. an inheritance yeah. yeah and so 
uh, and sometimes you just has to have to ask the Lord. So how does, okay, that couldn't happen. You know, sometimes there's something we assume was going to be a natural thing that there is a spiritual uh, application to, you know, you're going to have a lot of children and it's going to be spiritual children that happen. So these things are all matters that don't have easy easy answers. There's wrestling we have to do with God. That's part of, uh, it's part of the process and it's good. Mm -hmm. And the things you can't, you can't be unshakable about with him are he's good and he's only good and his intentions towards us are only good. He is, you know, he says the testing of your faith is more precious than gold. Uh, there's other scriptures of the fine silver, you know, it, there, there's uh, this process of testing that we go through is considered very valuable even for the Lord, where we hang on to His name and, and uh, we hang, out, hang on to His reputation, His promises, and we believe that in the process of it, He will keep us from being shamed in our pursuit of, of trusting and believing Him. And so rather than, you know, simple answers uh, from us, we say, we recognize the complexity, particularly of different ones of these types of promises. Contending, we've been contending intensely for matters of health. You've had some, and we've got some good recent reports from it. And there are been, there's been uh, lingering uh, matters from a few years that we've been contending and fighting for. And then our, our justice, uh, our daughter justice thinks she's still, um, fighting through and so you learn you know there's something about learning to be thankful for the breakthroughs that do happen i think that's a key to the next level of victory is discovering what we can be thankful for and thanking mm -hmm. him for the areas of breakthrough that we are seeing that we are having and and then uh from that place of foundation mm -hmm. um begin to expect and see more. It seems to be key even to seeing the next level of breakthroughs, being able to find a place of, of thankfulness mm -hmm. and gratitude. Definitely. Even before the full manifestation uh, of, of, of the promise, you know. So. Yeah, that's all good. And I, I think three key things that you just said. One is that it's there's not a simple answer. And you said that, that he's the God of Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I, I just got it backwards in my, my brain. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob wrestled with God. There is a wrestling in this place of complexity. And that wrestling and that place of, you said, your, your faith is more precious than gold and tried and silver. Testing, yeah. That, that, that that testing and the faith that you don't compromise on, the faith to believe that he hears you and that he sees you and that he's intentional with your heart, with your life, and that he's good in his motivation towards you. And if something feels like it's being withheld or not intervened on on your behalf, that he's still good, that place of wrestling and what it produces in us is way more valuable to him and to us in the context of the bigger picture of eternity than anything that we're presently asking for. That being said, it doesn't mean that the things that we're presently asking for aren't also his heart. So a lot of people feel like, okay, well, God wants to heal, my, for example, my physical body all the time. Or they believe that God and I believe that too. Or that God wants to give you a marriage that is a picture of his love for his bride. And I believe that is true too. So why doesn't it happen every single time that we believe? And he says that all we have to have is the faith of a mustard seed. That's like teensy tiny. Yet it produces a whole tree. So there's, there's very little that he requires on our part. And so often at times it feels like He's not doing his part, but yet we know him well enough to know that he cares about the things that we're asking for when we're asking in faith and we're asking things that are important to him as well. They're like core values of the kingdom, a good marriage, a strong family, children, having healthy lives, being prosperous, being able to be generous with other people because we have overflow. 
those basic things that we are contending for that we're not seeing, why? And in that why, that wrestling, that is producing a faith that, that believes what it cannot see and what it realizes it may never see. And if we realize, if, if not only those things are important to God, but even superseding those things, the faith and the trust and the hope and the love that it builds and it, and, it, and it causes fear to fall away and doubt to fall away. And we believe and we cling to the character and the nature of God beyond what we might be experiencing in the moment. That in and of itself, isn't, God's not playing games with us. He's, he's saying, I, I see the context of your life entirely and you only see it a little bit. We don't see the context. I, I was telling my sister this yesterday. Is it my sister? I was telling somebody. I'm a person that like lives with a high value for context. When I'm telling someone something or when I'm listening to them, I want to know the context in which I'm hearing it or the context in which I'm giving someone information. I want to make sure they understand it. And, and God was talking to me and he said, you're, you're going to you're going to have a level of frustration in this life if you don't realize that you're not capable of having the complete context. Because you can't see what I can see and you can't see eternity and you're having to trust me with the context of your life. And because of that, what what we are gaining for ourselves, it's not what I'm trying to say is we're, it's we're not compromising when we say like um, the Hebrew, the three Hebrew children that uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, he will deliver me in the fire, but if he doesn't, I know his character, I know his heart, he wants to show up in the fire and deliver me, but if he doesn't, what did they say? We're still not going to bow. We're still not going to bow. So that is the posture that we have to have, is the humility to say, well, first of all, the, the, the confidence in the character and nature of God to say, he'll show up for me. And I'm going to believe for that till, till I see it or till I die. Or if he doesn't show up, it's because there's a context to the, this particular thing I'm contending for that I can't quite see. And I have the humility to recognize that. And it doesn't mean that God's not who he says he is. He is a healer. He is a miracle worker. He can intervene in the way that I'm believing for, but if he doesn't, and in that place that's a razor's edge in our hearts, in that truth held intention place, that's where he is. And that's where we find ourselves leaning into him, dependent on him, and, and yet not, not, not giving up on who we know him to be. We know that we can move his heart. Um, like what's the story in the New Testament of the lady that um, said, you know, even the... The crumbs, the dogs, the dogs can get the crumbs. Well, there's a whole, what, what that meant um, going into the, the wider uh, application, aspect of, yeah. application of the story. But there's... Like she moved his heart and there was the persistent woman before the judge, um, the, the yeah. parable that Jesus told and, you know. Well, and, and Jacob himself, I will not let you go until you bless me. And there's Hannah, Hannah's cry and she's wept and wept before then like, you know, give me children or I die, essentially. And there is, and, and none of those are just key as a principle. They're, they're important, um, examples there's different ways the scripture also says having done all stand mm -hmm. and there's jesus who sleeps in the storm first before he rebukes it so there is a being led by the holy spirit in the process i think the test so for us is to just get past like you know what it's it is where the hebrew children were whether i get what I want, you know, it's Jesus, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mm -hmm. If the Son of God, when reduced to humanity, at some point felt like he had been abandoned by God, God wasn't listening to something, 
and he had pretty enlightened understanding, even though he was reduced to human form, then we can expect that we're going to David himself. That scripture came from David. My God, my God, why have you forsake me? So if his key, the son of God himself and his key leaders uh, at some point came upon, a, you know, they just did not understand. There was like, having done all, I'm going to stand, I'm going to persevere. Yeah. The, the test for us is not to, uh, you know, seek to impugn the character of our God. Just like, you know what? I don't know why. I love you anyway. You're good anyway. And, and you know, there's a question that can be asked at some point. Do you want to keep, um, keep contending for what you think was spoken to? Again, I think a proper step is the vetting of it. And I think every, every promise, uh, you know, Abraham gets this promise, you're going to have children as the sand, sand of the shore and the stars of the sky. Mm -hmm. And then he gets it from God himself. And 25 years later, he doesn't even have the first grain of sand. And he was supposed to hang on to it, even though it seemed impossible. Right. And, and so it's all part of a, a most important aspect of our walk with the Lord, uh, of our um, holding on to who he is and his character, persevering, and, and mainly, if you didn't know it, it's very, very normal. Um, it's a very normal process mm -hmm. to, uh, to be contending and, and there to be challenged towards it. And then there's just great joy when there is a fulfillment, fulfillment of, of promises. And, and, uh, and Hebrews talks about the, um, those who, who died in faith still believing yeah. what they hadn't seen and how precious that was to our Father. And, you know, if you're found in that list, that's the worst your story can get. You know, you, you were found in faith. You died in faith believing. Um, I love how there's an analogy that you use. For those of you that, are, that have been contending maybe for a physical healing, for, for yourself or maybe for someone else, um, your father had Parkinson's disease and, and he died with it. Um, but he, I mean, if it was up to him having done all the right things and, and his wife, your mom, I mean, they believed they had plenty of faith and they, they understood the power of their words and read the scriptures, read the healing scriptures, scriptures daily for 20 years, seeing many other people healed when they prayed for them. And yet he wasn't healed of Parkinson's. And, you know, you talk about, um, you know, a a grain of, of wheat or you like to call it a piece of corn because you you farmed when you were young and y'all would grow corn and can you share kind of what God showed you in that yeah because there was a particular uh, test and battle that we went through in, in intense prayer my, my dad was one of them uh, there's uh, you know a young boy that prayed several hundred hours and and um, and then he died and there was an improvement for a season, and then it was, and so it was just, it was so um, horrific mm -hmm. um, to know, because that was a clear one. Well, he's died, he's, he's gone, and then we even prayed for a few hours for resurrection, it didn't happen. And so you wake up the next morning, and you're just like, oh, God, you know, you feel like you've been pruned back to a nub, and, and how am I ever going to exercise faith again? And the Lord, he spoke, and he said, you just need to know that None of your prayers were wasted. Nobody's prayers, nobody's tears are wasted. They never, they're never wasted. He said, whenever you pray for, whenever you pray for, it is being, it is accruing. It is, it, it, you It's like a substance. It's faith yeah. is a substance in heaven and in the spirit realm. It's, it's a literal substance. Well, and just like the scriptures talk about the prayer of the prayers of the saints in a bowl and they mm -hmm. increase. Mm-hmm. And he said, it's my call whether you get it at that moment or if it is for a later moment. He says, and that was the, goes to the analogy of corn. There's a way you can, you can go to a corn field and you can pull off a, a cob of corn and eat corn on the cob. And so that's where you get to eat it right then. It's like, yes. That's your miracle. <laughs> that's your miracle right then. But there's another way where the stalk actually goes brown and dies and there's no more green leaves and and the corn you, you use it for seed and so you unhusk it and then that's what we would do on a farm you take 
the corn kernels off of it and you plant it. And when so you, you didn't get to eat that corn, you're putting it into the ground. You put it in the ground, it's what Jesus essentially did. You know, he went into the ground. We could look at it and say, he's like, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? If it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Yeah, Jesus himself. He could be possibly processing the fact. He's like, I've just been released for three and a half years, and we've got this. Can't we just accomplish this now? Mm -hmm. Why is there dying for a future moment? And so what we can understand now, uh, you know, there's the hindsight tells at least as they say hindsight is 2020 there is there are seven several billion more souls in heaven right now several billion more that will accompany the king of kings forever because it, jesus wasn't allowed to wrap it up in his day and moment mm -hmm. and so he became a seed that allows whosoever believes in him now can have this great harvest and so just know that whatever you're contending for in some way becomes spiritually available if it wasn't for you, and it's still like, almost, we'll say, legally entitled uh, uh, to you, your inheritance, but it, it matters because at the time it feels like, wow, because that's what I said. I said, Lord, why did you allow me to waste a hundred hours of intense prayer there? Why? There's other things I could have done. If you're just going to take them. Yeah, and then there's the whole issue of emotionally and spiritually investing yourself where y you you pour yourself out and you have hope and the level of disappointment almost hits your heart as betrayal when when it's come out of an intimacy with your God. And so I think that's the way the Lord would want to encourage each and every one of you. He wants to encourage us is just to know that, uh, you know, anything you do in faith, whatever is extra, whatever, yeah. you know, that's the currency of heaven. It builds up in some way or another. And, 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 and ultimately, it's faith that draws on who you know him to be. I know you are a healer. I know you are a miracle worker. I know that you're good. I know that you want to prosper us and not harm us. And, and few, you know, past generations didn't know that. Yeah. And, and collectively, the believers that are alive today, just generally speaking, we, we know he's good. He's good. And so we're believing for things that past generations didn't even know they could ask God for. But yet we're still finding ourselves in these places of yeah, as you're pointing out, contradiction. Out of, out of Hebrews, they're, they're called the heroes of faith. Yeah. And it talked about how those who, whose body were cut, cut asunder, they were mocked, they were betrayed, they were persecuted, they were killed. They didn't, it says they, they did not get it all. Um, but. They're considered heroes of faith because they contended earnestly for that which they knew to be the character of God. Yeah. That's what you're just saying now. Yeah. You know he's good. You know he's a healer. You know he wants to give good things to his kids. You know his thoughts towards us are, are, are marvelous, wonderful. We also know, as the part we're less familiar how to process it, he wants, there. it's important for us to be tested. We're being prepared for something in eternity. Mm -hmm. That we, There's a, a high element of mystery still around that we're being prepared for something he didn't just want people to be born and then zapped to yeah, heaven yeah that's the bigger context that's the bigger context yeah. and so um he's in the he's in the testing and yes god is not the source of wickedness and evil and he doesn't desire us to be uh, sick and everything else but he is aware that living in this life it is testing it is contradiction and we hang on to faith, we stay encouraged, we don't, we win when we don't lose our hold on who he is. That's right. And, and, and so that's, that's everything. Important. That's everything. Because, because in the big picture sense, and we talk about this a lot, if you follow uh, our, reading our resources or, or whatever, we talk about the end game is the knowledge of God filling the earth. And so it starts with our own heart. So what you contend for, the knowledge of God, what he's really like, his true character, his correct heart towards you, the fact that he is always for you and never against you, no matter what your circumstances tempt you to believe. When we get that individually, not only does it affect the spirit realm around us, because we're holding fast to the knowledge of the glory of who God is, but it, 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 it will spill over into the areas of culture where we will contend for the truth of who he is to be seen 
in media, in government, in education, the areas that we're passionate about, in family, because we've seen and experienced this good God who sometimes shows up through our circumstances and sometimes doesn't, but we don't let that sway us, so we begin to reform culture itself. So this is intricately, your personal battle is intricately connected to the biggest battle of all, which is the knowledge of the glory of God filling the earth and people having access to the truth of what he's really like. And if we had as believers everything go perfectly and we could get healed every time we prayed and we could see the money come in every time we need it to fund something and etc., then would we really be able to relate to people that are that are struggling and contending for that without God. And you know? it's clearly there's a compassion it yeah. creates in us. It, and it clearly he knew we were not. You know, if the if we start thinking, why aren't we getting an answer to everything? And why are some people dying? That's just not right. In a way it's not right, but the fact that the Holy Spirit is introduced as our helper. Yeah. And it means we're going to need help. We're going to need help. <laughs> that means something is is above our pay grade yeah. to figure out. Yeah. And then he's counselor. Yeah. So what does that mean? It means we're being overtaxed in our mind on things, and so we need counsel. Yeah. And he's a comforter. What does that mean? Something, something sad. Needs uh, happen, comforting. Happen. Yeah. So trauma. There's Tragedy. clearly this is part of a normal process that as we contend for more. We, we live in contradiction and mystery, but we continue to proclaim he's good yeah. and, and continue to encourage ourselves. It's okay if there's a lapse from time to time where you have to beat on his chest and, and say, uh, you know, exp express your bitterness, your, your, your concern in the way Hannah did yeah. or, or wrestle the way Jacob. That's fine as well. And most of us have been alive long enough to understand that pain is a part of life. But here's where we get tripped up. There is a lie that comes pretty early on in all of our stories. And this lie that's so easy to believe is that we can't handle any more pain. We can't handle any more disappointment. And so we'll try to stay the safest route, just even subconsciously. Don't believe for anything more. Don't, Don't hope for anymore. anything more. Yeah. Don't contend for something that might not happen. And we hold it all close to ourselves because we believe deep down inside this lie that we couldn't handle any more disappointment. Disappointment, we can't handle any more pain. And I'm so sorry to tell you, the truth is you can handle more pain and you can handle more disappointment. And if you can't, he says, you will not be tested beyond what you can handle. And so that's, and you, that's and what you, you only can have, have confidence you in. You only have grace for what's actually happening. And you only have grace that's dispensed to you. His mercies are new every day. So the challenge becomes not believing the lie and then staying present and not allowing yourself to like go to that what if place. What if this, what if this time next year it still hasn't happened? Like staying present so that you can receive the present grace, the present mercy, the present comfort and, and, and know that pain will have an end. There will come a day when for all of eternity, there will be no more pain and no more disappointments. And we have to trust that at the core of our pain, God, he, he doesn't take any of it lightly. You matter so much to God that he wants to make sure that all of the pain that you experience is used for your good and only your good and is used for something that will make a difference in this lifetime that you may or may not see with your own eyes that actually changes the course of someone's history because you chose to believe and to live from a place that says he's good, he's only good, he is with me, he's worth the contending, he's worth the risk of disappointment, he's worth the risk of more pain. So we're declaring that over you. Do you want to just pray over yeah. them, them as we close? Lord, we just thank you for uh, this season that so many are in. And uh, it's, it's, in a way, it seems like it's a season where more have been with their promises challenged or delayed. And we could say from that, 
that uh, it seems like a great season of breakthrough is, is, is near for us, uh, where we see you, you who are the promise maker as also the promise keeper. Yes, you are. And we thank you that this is who we can already celebrate you as, mm -hmm. even in the midst of contradiction. And uh, I just pray, Lord, that uh, even as we're praying together right now and inviting you into the process, that you'd release encouragement, that there'd be an impartation of encouragement, mm -hmm. that hope, yes. wherever hope has died, that it would be ignited again, that yeah. faith would be ignited, that joy would be ignited, that a new love for you, yes, a love for God. process, a love for what you're doing yes, in them would be ignited. We thank you that you are, are doing all things well. And the same God uh, that started a work, you're the author and finisher of our faith. Yeah. And we can have that trust and confidence. And uh, let there be, Lord, accelerated fulfillment of promises in this season. Yes, and, and may that be our portion. We thank you that this is in your heart. And we continue to look to you as a great God, a good God, a generous God, a patient God, yeah. and a God who has a hope, a future for each and every one of us in mind. Yeah. And we thank you for all these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One quick little prophetic word for every one of you. I just felt like God said to remind you of this. Jacob wrestled with him. And he got more than he asked for. He actually got a new identity and a new name from God. And God from that time forward called him Israel. And then you have an entire nation and world that has literally been affected by the fact that Jacob wrestled with God. And in this place of contending with him, what, what you will see is that new identity and the truth of who you really are. Your name, literally how God what the essence of who he put in you is going to begin to unfold because you were willing to wrestle with God and not be afraid of more pain and more disappointment. So we just bless you guys. Thanks for listening in and we look forward to another conversation. Right on.